this is me. I can't move. Why can't I move? Because that big, terrifying world border at the edge of Minecraft is now surrounding me. But luckily for me, this thing expands one block each day, which means my claustrophobia gets smaller. And I have got to try to survive down here in hardcore mode using the very limited resources I have. Did I forget to mention that I'm also next door neighbors with a legit army? So yeah, that, that's just great. Day one, I started off trapped in a very small border. Get a good look at it now, because this place is going to look very different within these next 100 days. As you can tell, there really wasn't much to destroy, so I collected what I could, which was basically just dirt. And I didn't know what was around me. There could be absolutely nothing out there for all I know. I could be all alone. I pillared up and yeah, as you can see, there was a lot I could do around here. I was right in between a pillager outpost and a village, and I was already planning out the war between these two nations in my head. I feel like the horses would just be so useless surviving out here in this little border. But regardless, I'm gonna find a way to capture them all the way out there. I didn't know what to do, so I sat here looking at the ground and well, boom. Okay, look at that transition right there. It's now day two and that border just got a little bit bigger. I just dug up all the dirt I could basically and hit some trees hoping I'd get a sapling. But of course, with my luck, I did not. I looked out in the distance just thinking of ways I could turn this 100 by 100 area into a whole new planet. I thought here day and night until it was the next day already. And today there was a miracle. A tree was uncovered. I hit around these trees getting an apple and a sapling before breaking down the rest of it. And of course my first tree is a birch tree. Like bruh, the worst one. I ran in circles for no reason, then crafted a pickaxe, mined some stone and crafted a better pickaxe and mined some more stone. So now I had the whole set of basic tools, and since I had the power to collect cobblestone, I couldn't get enough of it until I realized I should probably plant the saplings I got. And after doing that, now the only thing in front of me were stones and a pickaxe. So I got back to using those where I picked up coal. And beneath me was a pool of water with some magma blocks, but they were on the other side of the border just teasing me, so that was not happening. I made up some torches for the night and had the idea to get rid of the water so I I could mine farther. Just totally genius. So that's exactly what I did. I mined down in a spiral throughout the night until I discovered I was building my base on an ancient burial ground apparently, aka a cave. Enough of that, I thought, you know, I was not gonna die today. So I just went up to the surface and watched the sunrise. The border expansion uncovered a couple trees around me that I got rid of, and I was hoping this dropped wheat seeds, but of course it didn't. Looks like another day of starving. After getting some dirt, the zebra looking trees I planted grew, so I collected the wood and used the saplings from them to expand my tree enterprise here. Right now, this was just a big Monopoly game. I tried to get as much as I could, as fast as I could, and not gonna lie, I was, I was taking an L. While I was collecting the magma blocks, I somehow broke physics with the water. Like, look at this, really? Until I didn't, and the water just led me right into a creeper. Bro, you really had to kill the bat like that. Come on, man. Well, the small cave I was in expanded into a bigger cave, and all I could do was look at it because the border was in front of me. I mined deeper down, and the mining brought me to a giant drop-off with creepers and skeletons just waiting for me at the bottom. Curious me, of course, you know, tried to find a way to visit them, but fortunately, I didn't because I'd be dead. On the way up, a skeleton spawned in, so I was trapped either way, and I almost died to it. I tried using the water to get around them, but I as you can see, that did not work. So I just pillared up and somehow I was still alive. I sat there till the next day and on day five, this iron golem was over here doing some parkour, which distracted me from my daunting reality of having one heart and a hunger for absolutely anything that moved. Today, I chopped down the trees I planted yesterday, but every time I moved, I literally I heard the footsteps of the mobs below me. And when you're on one heart, it's a whole lot scarier. I thought it'd be smart to use the sun to take them out. so I made a big hole down here in my not so much of a home and turns out they they were not there i could hear two of them just fighting farther down below me and so at least that was one less mob i had to worry about after chopping up some dirt eating an apple and filling the hole in i thought if i built a mob grinder this early in the game that would be pretty dang cool so on one heart that's what i set out to do really bruh all the mobs are just avoiding me they're just all piled up over there i'm, I'm out here starving after seeing something like this you know 
you know, in the sky, I would be staying away too, not gonna lie. It's day six and I've realized something. The mob grinder here is a bit too small, so each day I had to extend it on each side. I spent the majority of this day building the main parts to this thing and... I used the rest of the daylight I had chopping up trees and getting rid of dirt in the area until something crazy happened. I actually found seeds. Yeah, crazy, right? This this gave me hope that maybe, just maybe, I could somehow recover from this low health I was at. I planted it, but really all I could do now was just plant more trees. I fixed up the mob grinder and hoped for some string so I could craft a fishing pole. And even though it wasn't done, mobs were falling from the sky already. And by some luck, dropped string and bones, like literally the two main things I needed. I made some bone meal and used that on the wheat, then expanded my farm and crafted the almighty fishing pole. I waited around and more skeletons fell out of the sky dropping bones, so now I made that bread, but was still on one heart. So on day 7, I started off this day with some fishing, and this miracle here brought me back up to full health. Since my inventory was starting to fill up quickly, I made a chest. Trees were flooding in around me since the borders expanded, and as you can tell, I was not not about that. This zombie appeared from nothing, literally just trying to mug me, but actually just gave me free iron somehow. Bruh, I could not find iron anywhere. And the first one I get is from a zombie. What the heck are these chances? The mob grinder still had work to be done, so I went back up there doing the maintenance, got attacked by a ghost, expanded the edges, and almost looked an enderman in the eye. That would have not been good. It was day eight. I continued expanding this the next day and filled in some missing spots. Nope, you were, you were not chilling around me. Nope. I got arachnophobia. I ran out of materials and said hello to some trees for more. Then I went into absolute like monk mode building this thing until it was nighttime and I was not hanging around this at night of course. There was one thing I still needed and that was iron. I used the one iron I had to make a shield and went down looking for some more. I ran into loads of coal, basically everything you could run into except for iron and eventually I was back at this area but this time I had a plan. Why? Water. Yep, that, that's basically just, just water. I used the water from above to make a way down here, and let's just say the mosh pit was waiting for me. I kind of just sat there, messing around, just chilling, until the creepers blew them all to bits, literally. I made my way down, getting shot and thrown into an explosion after explosion. And somehow with two hearts left, I managed to fight off the mobs left in this place. And now it was time to explore. I found Lapis and the entrance to a huge cave, but still found no iron. So, you know, I thought the only logical answer was to dig deeper, ignore the two hearts I have, and totally I got this. Yeah. Mob after mob and this big old slime pulled up on me. And after fending off the whole undead army on two hearts and not finding any iron, I went back to the surface where I tended the crops, expanded the farm, and just sat there all sad in the rain with no iron. I couldn't just spend my time doing nothing. I got myself together, chopped down some trees, and expanded this XP farm. I wasn't too sure why the mobs weren't spawning up here yet, so uh, hopefully I didn't break it somehow. I ended my day taking out some angry Karens, and started day 10 chopping down the new trees that appeared. Looks like the mob grinder was kinda working, but I still needed to put water in it, but that requires iron, which I did not have, and health I didn't have, so today I casted my rod and was getting everything except normal fish. Like, what was I gonna do with a lily pad and a death sponge or whatever you want to call this thing here? With four hearts, I risked it all and went back down to the caves and I was gonna find iron even if it costed me everything. I went down this cool custom slide, made some skeletons fight each other, beat up the survivor, then survived against a walking nuke. And finally, after ages of mining, I started finding iron. I returned to the surface feeling like a rich man and half dead at the same time. I said, hello to this green dude here and smelted the iron I got. I used that to craft a pickaxe, a bucket, an axe, and a shovel. I took out my frustration on the dirt, then took it out on tree branches, and after getting enough dirt to build the whole universe, I placed some torches and spent the night expanding the mob factory. Turns out it was too small, but I think I was on the right track, at least, I hope. Day 11, I crafted a shovel and some ladders and got to work on making an easier way up to the mob grinder. 
water so I could place water in there. And after a lot of back and forth travel, the water was eventually filled in. Everything was set up and ready, but there were still no mobs in sight, like bruh. I was starving and confused, so I did some farming before hearing the call of death from the sky, aka phantoms. And that's when I realized it. Remember those crazy caves I explored around? All the mobs were probably just throwing a party down there, so none of them were spawning where I wanted them to. I lit up some of the cave, got attacked by some green dudes here, and these things, so I decided to head on out of there before I end up dead. I returned to the surface the next morning and expanded the farm because this thing was falling apart, like look at this thing bro. Mobs weren't spawning in the mob grinder either, so I climbed and built up to test a few I thought if I built high enough, the mobs in the caves would just despawn and they'd all just spawn in the mob grinder, but I did that and yeah, nothing happened. The only mobs here were outside of the mob grinder and wanted me dead. Bro, I really almost died to a creeper. Are you serious right now? As you can tell, things were not looking good for me. I thought about my thoughts while I fished for fish, then thought I needed to make the fishing area bigger because why not? Day 13, the border expanded another bit and today it was raining. I noticed a pig in the distance and thought maybe by some miracle the pig would just come over here after the wheat, but nah, the mobs, they were all just avoiding me. I went back down to cast the pole into water and sat there literally like a robot for five minutes straight staring at this little fishing hook until I actually caught enough fish to bring my health back up and it's day 13 and I still didn't have a house. And to make a house, I needed wood, so I got to chopping down the trees until my favorite axe broke. As you know, I was broke myself running low on iron out here. So I went down into the cursed mines and I hit a bunch of stone down here and my luck was absolutely terrible until it wasn't and I actually found some iron. Too bad it was like on the other side of the border, like bruh. I spent the rest of the day mining down here and started day 14 showing these zombies the way of the bow before just lighting this place up with torches. I smelted the iron that I found around here and just kept on mining until I finally crafted this little helmet and shield here. Maybe this can help me fend off against the giant army just waiting for me. Okay, yep, yep, definitely not. I tried my best and took a good bit of these things out, but bro, this little one decided to be an absolute legend and took me all the way down to one heart. All of that fishing was for nothing, but I had an idea to make a comeback. I created a little makeshift farm down here and used some bone meal on it, but I didn't have enough wheat to make the bread, so my whole big brain plan just went down the tubes. And I tried fishing, but I, I couldn't even do that out here. To end the night, I put on these boots and left out of the cave, nearly dying again to another army of mobs that pulled up on me. And at the surface, this creature here was just wanting revenge on me. Luckily, the farm arm grew in so I could cut it down and actually make something to eat without dying. Yeah, that'd be nice. After replanting the crops, I chopped down some trees, fought off these angry things, and turns out there was a mini cave I missed right underneath me. So that thing had to be lit up and I spent the night just chopping down the trees. Now since I was stacked on wood, it was time to start building the house. I was thinking where uh, in this little square do I put this house? I know I didn't want it to be under the mob grinder because that'd just be lame. So so I just chose a spot over here and filled it in so it was even. This pig was still chilling over here. I tried to get it to come closer with a fishing pole, but that thing was way too far. I started on making the outline of the house, placing some wood, getting rid of dirt, uh, filling in the floor with planks, pretty much the basic parts of a house. Except I had a tree poking through my living room here. And nobody wants to have to jump to get to their front door, so I placed stairs in the front so that didn't have to happen, and I filled a gap in with with cobblestone slabs just because I thought it looked cool. I was liking the stairs, so I made more of them and put them along the bottom area I had here. And I got a good look at just everything I built. And yeah, this place, this place really needed a revamp. We'll get there, but hopefully. But my first house was missing an entrance and walls. So I got to doing this little design I thought looked cool. Okay, why does this look more like the entrance to a portal than my house? You know what? We're, we're gonna go with it. Since height is what I'm gonna have to rely on in these hundred days. I thought it would be a good idea to add another story onto this, and I broke the golden rule of never using birch trees. I thought having one layer be oak and one birch would be a good idea, you know, just slow 
slowly go up story by story with something new, but like, bro, what is, what is that thing, bro? Look at this. That is not looking like a house. I spent the night frustrated, wandering around here, just breaking leaves until the morning. On day 16, the pig got so close. I tried using the fishing rod on it to bring it over here until it was literally right there and my rod broke. Bruh, are you serious? This thing, this game hates me. I made a new fishing rod, filled in some holes around here with dirt, and really just cleaned up around the place. This area was a complete mess, so something had to be done to make it a little organized, and that involved deleting a ton of dirt, created parts of the walls to the house, and for some reason put lily pads in the front lawn. Don't, don't ask, I don't know. I fixed up my infinite water section, deleted more dirt, and a miracle happened. A chicken somehow wandered into the base, a mob actually showed up. I made a temporary cage for it and spent the rest of the night creating a square around this area. The next day, I cleaned up the area, removing a bunch of dirt and creating walls around the edges. And bruh, that chicken is still chilling in the cobblestone prison thing. It was time to build a new prison, which meant I needed to build the mob farm area. Chicken prison is complete. Bruh, the single chicken will literally create an empire. Just watch. I created a cobblestone outline around the bottom section here and then got a good look at the farm bro this this thing was not it it was going all over the place as you can see so i just deleted it and now it looked like a meteor done crashed into my base i wanted to fill the massive hole and this area in with stone so i put the stuff in the furnace and just hit the dirt until it was done smelting i turned the stone into slabs and filled in this tragedy that i created bro you do not want these hands i said hi to my only friend in this madness and yeah, it tried running away from me. The bottom section was now not looking like a complete mess, and after fighting off some haters, I needed food and didn't have a farm. So on the next day, that is what I started on. I dug an outline around it and placed water into it, ate some apples, and began the planting. This thing was actually looking official. I thought a fence would make it look more official, so I placed those around it until I ran out. Since the border expanded, I was back to my old job of cutting down the tree trees until I could make more and was back to the fencing. I made a little pathway to the mob grinder and next I needed a section for the tree farm. So tonight I placed a lot of dirt on this side, then planted rows of trees. Okay, I forgot to place torches in this section as you can see, so I kinda went to war as well. And then some pigs found their way in, which meant another prison was in the making and I put that right next to the chickens. Since I didn't have carrots, it was gonna be hard to get the pig in there, you know? I I tried pushing it, but it started fighting back against me, so I wasn't able to do it today. On the next day, I did the usual breaking of trees, but when I turned around, the pig by some chance just volunteered to enter in. I do not know what was wrong with this thing, but you know, I, I wasn't questioning it. I, I went on with my day, but the other one, on the other hand, was not about it. I started building the house some more until I saw a cow nearby, so I hopped down and lured it into the other section I built. Okay, bruh, why did the pig just walk? walk into this. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but they were they were really just loving the cage somehow. As confused as I was, I got back to building the birch floor of the house until I ran out of birch wood. So I chopped down some more, worked on the walls, smelted the cobblestone, and I kinda had a whole rainforest in my yard over here. So I got the free wood from that. And then a creeper just almost ended my career, not today. I collected the apples that the trees dropped and went back into the caves to find iron. And you know what I found? A whole horde of zombies. So yeah, I was not about that. I mined around just lighting up the area as I went until it was day 20. Today, I returned to the surface as a rich man with all the iron I needed. And this random llama was now trapped here with me forever. But I was kinda almost dead. So I hit up the wheat farm, replanted everything and made enough bread so I could actually move around. And you know, as you can tell, the walls to my house were non-existent. And I had the idea to make some stone brick slabs and place them along the edges so there was at least something there. I picked up the iron I was smelting and crafted some more armor. And remember that chicken that was wandering around in here? Well, today it hatched another chicken. So the chicken army was slowly forming. Bro, imagine day 100. There's just a thousand chickens in the border. I filled in a lot more of this area with dirt and expanded my front lawn 
around some more, so it didn't look like the mess it was. And I couldn't help but wonder why exactly nothing was coming out of the mob grinder here. I, I thought maybe I just needed to raise the roof by one or something. So I spent the whole night destroying the roof and putting a new one on basically. But you know what happened? A whole lot of nothing. I woke up early to feed the mobs and collected the iron I had smelted before looking around the base for the wandering trader since I saw the llama earlier and it was nowhere to be found. One day that castle is going to be ours I'm telling you. I built the walls of the birch house, collected more wood and spent the rest of the day working on this. All right, this might not look good, but I'm putting stone here. After a lot of building, I crafted shears and mowed down the leaves and I placed those in front of the house. It was starting to come together a little, but bro, that thing still has a long way to go. On the next day, for example, it was missing a roof. So I did the farming and fed the mobs, then searched around the edge for more of them because this cow was getting lonely out here. I had a giant section filled in with trees that was taking up a way too much space, so I got the idea to move it to the sky. I built out a dirt island on both sides of the mob grinder and okay, why is the dirt invisible? And then I made my way back down. There was a good bit of mobs in my base, so that meant I needed to put down more torches. And this forest in my base had to go. I tried chopping it up, but that was uh, taking forever. So I took it down the old fashioned way. Ouch. Tonight, everything was going perfect until a green destroyer of hopes and dreams decided to ruin my peace. The next day, I finished up one of the tree islands, placed the sap links everywhere and added some leaves so it didn't just look like floating dirt in the air. I crafted an ax, chopped up some leftover trees because now I had to fill in the walls. The walls were filled in, so now it was time to add the leaves. And the leaves looked somewhere between cool and terrible, but I wasn't sure so I just kept it the way it was. I said hi to a skeleton and filled in a hole the creeper made. Tonight I was gonna find diamonds but I only had one bread so this wasn't the best idea. And I met a small horde of mobs that wanted my head as soon as I went down there. It's just a witch, you know? What, what the heck? What is a witch gonna do? Yeah, that witch brought me down to half a heart. I tried getting out of there and ended up getting lost in the very own tunnels that I created. And things were going south, but I was just embracing at this point, honestly. I even almost drowned underground somehow. How do I get myself in these scenarios? Oh my, is that? It's the sky. We've, we've made it to land. Day 24, the first thing I did was get wheat to make bread and smelted the iron I found while I was down there. Yo, birds, I'm still alive. Yo, it's a mirror. They, they don't they don't care one bit, bruh. Today, I walked around the base happy I wasn't dead and just did some basic stuff like filling in the uneven areas with dirt. I didn't want to repeat of last night happening again, so I placed torches everywhere. And tonight, I added a back wall to the house and some stairs so you could get to the next floor. Lower. Look at that. This things are actually starting to get done here. And I spent the rest of the night getting rid of the dirt. And by day 25, everything up here was even. But now I had a giant flat space here with nothing on it. So uh, yeah, something had to be built here. And well, bam, here it is, a giant rectangle. Believe it or not, this is gonna be a giant watchtower. I added the ladders, planks, and cobblestone, and just ignore these random blocks up here for now. It still needed work. It was, this is definitely a work in progress, as you can see. I did some mining around, and I guess I forgot to place torches on the tower. So now the mob were using the watchtower to watch me. I tried going up to the mob grinder, but was shot down instantly. And this this only happens to me. Why, bro? Eventually, I found a way up it, and I removed the roof to the mob grinder because I thought by some miracle, maybe mobs would just start spawning in if I got rid of the roof. I don't know. It was the next day, and sadly, mobs didn't spawn that night. I did some farming so I could make bread and heal up, then got to organizing the base. My infinite water source was in a terrible spot, as you can see so I moved it to the lower section. I filled this spot in with dirt and I placed the torches around the watchtower and I was just now realizing how terrible this place was designed. I put steps around here and fed the chickens their final meal before they became mine. That chicken went right into the oven. That was cooking while I placed the torches on my house and now that I had actual food that wasn't bread, I might stand a chance against those deep 
dark, terrifying caves below. I mined down as far as I could, looking for diamonds, and entered into a small cave here. You know, I heard a zombie at first, so I was a little hesitant, but he, he didn't get along with his green friend here, as you can see. And I found gold for the first time, but come on, what was I, what was I gonna use gold for, bro? There was also a few redstone, but no diamonds. I literally just kept mining down until eventually I reached bedrock. Can we, can we take a moment of silence for how unlucky I've been? It's been rough out here. Yo, do y'all hear that? I hear an army. Yeah, I, I heard an army of mobs a couple blocks away, so I did what you shouldn't do and followed the voices, which led to a massive cave and me almost exploding. I got rid of a couple mobs here until I blinked and literally they were all raiding me. One second, there was a creeper, but now look at this. What have, what have I done? Somehow I survived that and explored farther through the cave where the only thing between me and instant death here was a puddle of water. The creepers just like blew everything up like they usually do and there was not a single diamond in this cave. It was the next day and I was still stuck down in this cave so I smelted the iron I found and made a new pickaxe before getting the heck out of this place. Yo, we have made it to the surface. It's a miracle. Hey, y'all miss me? Bro, they, they don't, they don't miss me. The little mob prison area here looked bland, so something had to be done. They were out here just getting rained on, so I got to creating a little building over them. After making the pillars, I crafted stone bricks and put those on the floor around them and got to building the roof until it was complete. Hey, okay, not, not bad. What if I just turn this whole area into like a giant village? The next day, a true miracle happened. Mobs actually spawned in the mob grinder. I got 14 bones from it so it must have been working while I was mining and I collected the stones that were smelting to create more of the slabs and I had to make a floor that wasn't just dirt so I spent today placing the stone bricks around the section of the base and got rid of a lot of dirt so I could add the stairs that is a creeper nope getting in and out of here is now easier and less boring I removed a layer of dirt as well so everything was even and the mob grinder was slowly working whenever I went mining I had to go through this cave and I I've kind of just blankly been ignoring it the whole time. So if I was going to see this every day, I was going to have to create my own like bat cave out here. I had no idea what this was going to look like, but for now, I just cleared up some space around it. The morning of the next day, I said hello to a skeleton and egged the chickens. Bro, what, what are you doing out of your cage? Nope. I filled in the last of the stairs around here, hatched a chicken, got rid of dirt, and did some farming. I crafted more stone brick slabs and dug out an outline around the base where I placed them. Bro, what, what does the skeleton want, really? You do not want the smoke. I got rid of the trees since I already had like a whole island of them in the air. These chickens are so loud. Oh, did I really, I really just opened up the gate. Why? I made another chest and spent the rest of the day removing dirts and placing the slabs. Day 30, I pretty much continued what I was doing yesterday, but today, We've got a new mob in the base, bruh. It, it's a squid, bruh. Like, what am I, what am I gonna do with a squid? This new border expansion opened up the water section. So now I just had a, some floppy squid chilling around here. But on the bright side, I had sand now, which is actually something I needed for the base. Okay, what, what are the chickens doing? They had a good life. I wanted to get glass to add onto the house. So I went and mined the sand and one of the squids liked land a little too much. I smelted the sand I got and built a trap door over the hole so I just don't fall in and get swarmed by every living creature. While the sand was still smelting, I mined out more of the cave than deforested trees all around me. Okay, I think hopefully this glass is ready. I picked up the glass and created a window overlooking the base from the top floor and spent the rest of the night placing slabs, creating the start of what would be a massive empire. The next day, I kind of trapped this little chicken over here. I don't know why. And today I smelted more cobblestone and continued putting more of these bricks around here. Since some of the water was now exposed, I had this idea to make a giant river around the base. So if pillagers ever pulled up, I could just fill it with alligators or something, because why not? So I dug out a giant line for the river. This was very painful, especially because I had to use stone shovels out here to do this. So I took a break from that and extended more of the brick area, deleting dirt and placing bricks. I was then invaded by these UFOs here, which completely destroyed me. And I could not hit this thing to save my life, bro. Like, look at this. Yo, what is good, Enderman? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. After getting invaded by every living mob, the next day couldn't come sooner. The first thing I did was smelt some deep slate, then got back to mining out the area for the river, of course. And when that side was done, this man showed up. 
Hey, yo, finally the dude is back and bro, I have no emeralds. I was very broke. So hopefully a villager or a zombie villager would show up soon enough so I can just create an empire. The trader was doing some parkour on the trees and I trapped it. So someday I could come back to him when I had the emeralds and make my own country. Did a bit of farming, managed the Chick-fil-A and collected the smelted deep slate. Bro, what do I do with all these eggs? I visited the cave working on that night's expanding the sides here and place the deep slate on the roof to make it look not boring. <laughs> I thought it looked cool, but after that, it, it still looked a little boring, not gonna lie. I was getting claustrophobic, so I went to the surface and started the next day chopping down the new trees that showed up from the border expansion. Amazed, why, why are you chopping down the trees? How, how else am I supposed to make the base bigger? And after that deforestation was done, I just placed a bunch of them in a row like this. And I created the start of what would be a giant hut to cover this entire area. Now I'd have some protection from the annoying phantoms every night. I was trying to make the roof, but bruh, I needed a lot of steps and for some reason I was terrible at placing these things. Why are- why am I so bad at placing steps? What is this? I ate some bread for dinner, fed the minions, that those were, those were the chickens by the way, and spent the entire night placing steps and chopping down the forest of trees on the sky island. The next day, a miracle happened. I fixed my shaders so the border here actually looked normal and it wasn't like blaring. And you won't believe what else I did today. I spent the entire day and night building the biggest roof you've never seen. Okay, look at this masterpiece. Would you look at that? That is, I don't even know. <laughs> Bro, it's day 35 and this cow has been sitting in the same spot since day one. What is this dude doing? Today I worked on building the other half to this roof and of course I built it uneven at first. So I fixed that and by the end of the day the roof was completely filled in and some of the phantoms, they, of course, they still found a way to attack me. But regardless, at least now there was something here and I won't get rained on every night. Tonight, I hit up the local Chick-fil-A over here and it was day 36. I was through with all this building. I was not gonna build another block. I was ready to get into the danger. I did some cooking, then a bit of farming, and crafted tools that, were, bro, these were not good. And then the search for the diamond began. And yeah, that, that is a lot of mobs. Um, I'm thinking this was not a good idea. Psych. This was the best idea I've had all day. I went down there finding iron at first and almost died to a creeper. Yeah, I needed a new shield or I'd be dead. I smelted the iron I found and crafted an axe. And guess what? Smart me forgot to bring wood down here, so I couldn't even make a shield. Y'all saw how much mobs were down there. There was no way I was gonna- Yeah, I, I checked it out anyway, of course. I fought the entire undead army that was in front of me. And okay, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Just just maybe it wasn't. And after getting a few more iron, I made my first smart decision and tried retreating to the surface. But my pickaxe broke. So this all had to just be mined with my bare hands out here. And after all that, I finally saw the daylight. It was only a day down there, but it, it felt like weeks. I smelted the rest of the iron I found and placed the things I didn't need in a chest, because who knows, this may, might come in handy one day. I was able to actually craft that cursed shield finally. And one of the take a little break chopping down the trees. I know y'all want to see me like take on the whole galactic army out here, but dude's got to chill sometimes. I use the trees to make a wood plank area because one day this was going to be a whole village. I'm telling you, maybe I was just using too much torches, but I felt like there was a shortage of coal in this world. But luckily I found a giant vein of coal right where I was and back beneath the ground I went. Bro, why is there an army of creepers down here? Literally. I fought through here placing torches, almost getting blown up at every turn. I peered over this cliff and this was waiting for me. Bruh, this is this is not good. I mined down to get a better look and ran right into diamonds, finally, for the first time in 37 days. But the only problem was I did not know how I was gonna survive this. I just made a little opening here and took out each mob one by one, hoping a, a creeper wouldn't just blow up and destroy this. Mobs were everywhere and I almost got blown up here and almost died to a bunch of zombies, but somehow I escaped and got out of there alive. Nope. I am, I am out of there, nope. Dying to a zombie is literally the last way you would want to go out in hardcore Minecraft. I made a new shield and the next day was all out war. 
This is gonna be tough. Bruh, the zombie picked up my old shield. What is this? On the bright side of this mess, I found my first carrot. So now I would be able to live on something other than bread and chicken. Endless amounts of mobs and creepers showed up to the party. I looked around for any ores I could find down here, and I found another set of diamonds. Okay, good to know this wasn't all just for nothing. And then I made my way over to a lava pool I found, cause I still didn't have any lava or obsidian. I crafted a diamond pick and got to waiting forever for these to break. Eventually, after getting too much obsidian, I was ready to get a move on out of this cursed cave, and I finally made it to the surface the next day and watched the sunrise. I I was breathing actual air out here and not being bombed by creepers every second. The castle over here was getting closer and closer every day while my sanity was slowly moving farther apart. I smelted the ores that I got down there and since I now had obsidian, I wanted to make another portal. So for once, I could get out of this chunk, bro, this is cursed. I didn't want to make like a boring nether portal just sitting out on a patch of grass. I wanted to make a fancy one on a patch of grass. I had this idea to just mine out the underground cave completely and then just transform it into some nether themed monstrosity or something. I don't know, sound, sounds crazy, but probably will look crazy. That's just how we do it, you know? I spent the entire day clearing out this cave and started the same thing on the next day as well. What is this ender dude doing? I'm sorry, goodbye. All right, guys, it's the next day. As you can tell, the cave part is still a work in progress, but you know, I'm not gonna look at it for now. Today, I'm gonna do some cutting of the grass over here and I totally forgot God, I had carrots, so we gotta make the carrot farm over by the wheat farm. And y'all know what this means? After 41 days, the pigs are finally getting fed. I still never fed the pigs 50 days later. This is the carrot farm. Wabam. The carrot farm is done. Yep, it's a work of art if I say so myself. I had some leftover lava in a bucket, so I built a cobblestone generator, but the lava was right next to some wood, and some thoughts started pouring into my head like this could probably turn into a, a giant forest fire out here. So I decided decided to move that below into the cave and later tonight a miracle happened a zombie villager farmer showed up yo no way okay we gotta we gotta save this dude i built him a little prison house right away and needed a way to keep it from despawning but i needed an anvil to make a name tag and i was still lacking on the iron a little bit the next day i tried getting it to hold something because i heard that makes it not despawn but that wasn't working so my only option was to look for the iron i mind a Ton. Then my diamond pick broke, so I went back to the surface where the wandering wanderer wanted to sell some stuff to a man that literally lives on bare nothing here. I made a new pickaxe and spent the night digging through the deepest depths of the universe until I found a mine shaft. Or like rather, it, this thing found me. Okay, this this can't be how I die, not to some lame spiders. And luckily, it wasn't. I got out of that death trap and rethought my 43-day life in this Minecraft world. I sat there a little bit and I. I came to the conclusion I needed to be stronger. Thus, my training arc began. Day 43, I got prepared and walked straight down to the mineshaft. Luckily this time, I wasn't being swarmed by those eight-legged beasts, so I was able to break the spawner. I got rid of all these annoying webs, and bruh, there is literally nothing here, of course. I explored around here, lighting this place up, looking for a chest, just any chest in sight. But of course, there was nothing here. I spent the rest of the day down here doing some mining for diamonds or iron or whatever would show up in my way, but didn't find much. The next day, I cooked the iron and was able to craft this anvil. I turned the carrots golden. Why? Because I was gonna head to the nether, aka literally the dimension of death. I was met with a whole horde of undead pigs down here. Yo, y'all want me to take over the nether? Okay, nope, that, that is gonna have to wait. After getting pulled up on from the ghast, I got covered and just went to mining a tunnel. And while mining this tunnel, I made my way down to a lower section and just watched some skeletons bully each other. After that not so eventful battle, I collected the soul sand that was laying everywhere around here that if by some miracle I found nether war I could make a farm and bruh these ghasts hate me why do they hate me I retreated and met back up with the undead dudes out here where I found a patch of magma blocks so of course I mined that because that would be cool in the little portal section of the base this piglin pulled up on me but the sight of this undead army behind me just scared it away yo don't hurt me man please please don't hurt me I spent the next day exploring more through here fighting skeletons and whole ghasts commanding entire armies of 
the undead and the unknown. Just some everyday type stuff, you know. I made peace with a piglin as well and did some trades. I got some half decent stuff, but also got ripped off, of course. Okay, but you know what? I am done with this piglin. I am done. After scamming the scammer, I left out of the nether where I placed everything I got in a chest and repaired my diamond pick as much as I could. Yo, that is a great name right there. Look at that. That is amazing. I got leftover eggs and threw them at these cows to see if they'd run any closer, but I think I threw one a little too hard because it went full on Beyblade mode out here. I tried giving the pillagers a little surprise, but they were not entertaining me one bit. And guess what appeared in my base? A sheep. This meant I was one step closer to actually crafting a bed for the first time. I'm sorry, sheep, but this, this is your new home for now for the next 55 days. I forgot I had potatoes, so I spent the night building a farm for it. I almost died to a couple skeletons somehow, just trying to light this place up. And that's where I discovered my base was built on an ancient burial ground. Why? Why does this always seem to happen to me? It couldn't just be a regular cave down here. The next day couldn't have come any sooner. There's a couple things that for sure had to be done. I needed to finish the farm of potatoes, so I did that. This place needed lit up and these trees around here had to go. I spent the entirety of the day and the next morning working on those three things. Okay, why? Why is there an enderman in the carrot farm? I was discovering a lot of things about this base. I had my own island now in the corner here, so that was cool. Until I went for a little swim out here and found out there was a hole underwater that led straight to the Earth's core. I came too close to drowning down there. The base was looking completely uneven. It just looked a mess, all right. I spent the rest of today mowing down as much dirt as I could to make this place something I could work with. The next day, I just continued removing the dirt. Okay, Enderman, you, you gotta go. This dude's been in here for the past couple days. Yo, was that a pillager? Bruh, they've started the invasion. Yo, what if I trap a pillager? Okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe not. That, that's a bad idea. I ran to my house to take cover, but that clearly didn't work out for me, and I nearly lost everything. Yeah, that was a that was a little too close. Too close for comfort. After taking out the pillagers, I got back to destroying more dirt, and this section was almost completely removed. The next day, I dug more fought more and found a zombie villager. I let it into my house and trapped it on the top floor so now you could see it just looking down through the window. I spent the entirety of day 50 fishing in hopes of getting a name tag but all I got were just a lot of fish out here. The next day this village castle was uncovered so of course I went over for a visit and this place it was, just, it was just a little castle with nothing in it but I was able to get a better look at the village over there and it had this cool looking hole thing going through it. I tried fishing for this cow but that, it was not working so i just went back to finishing up what i started the last several days i uncovered an underwater cave that just led to a dead end underwater of course so i filled in the gaps with dirt and everything was officially flat bro these these phantoms need to chill why are why are they doing this to me man i started day 52 fed the mobs egged the pillagers house and smelted the netherrack i got from the nether i placed a lot of planks along the edge here for the future village and spent the rest of the night and the next day getting rid of everything below the base. Why? Honestly, I just thought it would look cool. I was kind of just destroying everything at this point and remaking it into something new. Tonight I collected the nether bricks, turned them into some steps, and placed them along here. Bruh, I, I need way more stairs than this, what the heck. I punished this skeleton for no reason, and visited the mines to look for iron and diamonds because my pickaxe was looking- it was in bad shape. I got shot down here over and over again, and realized my armor was broke, literally all of it. So I made a chest plate, it's literally all I could make, and explored more through these dark caves almost getting blown to bits at every corner until the end of the day i finally found some diamonds the next day i searched through these caves some more and came across this part of the mine shaft again where i found a chest but it was just on the other side over there just teasing me after sending a zombie to the gulag i got lucky and found a couple more chests down here one had a name tag and the other had some melon seeds and a power for enchant finally we have the first enchant okay time to take over the cave we're taking over. Yeah, I almost blew up right after that. I pursued on, and you know what? I found a new section to the cave. The only way in was kind of surrounded by death itself. And when I did make it in, I was almost blown to bits. 
Luckily, this place had iron, so this wasn't all just for nothing. I was gonna leave, and then every mob here decided to just throw me a party or something. Deeper into the cave, I went getting iron and making Enderman angry. Nobody likes hanging out in caves all day, so I just went to the surface. I was just trying to make a chest up here and was constantly pestered by phantoms. The next day, I collected the iron that was burning up in here. The border expanded, and the village was getting closer and closer, so I built up to it. Uh, hoping there'd be a villager just chilling, but uh, bruh, nobody, nobody was there. But you won't believe what happened. Over by that abandoned castle, a dude was there. Yo, bruh. Where, where has this man been the past 45 days? The heck? You, you have got some work to do. A lot of catching up. I gave this dude here a great name, as you can see, and boarded the boat. I didn't know where to put him yet, honestly. I just brought him right into the house before we got attacked by phantoms. And he ended up just living on the second floor. Tonight, I sheared the sheep while trying not to get attacked until it was the next day. I did the daily farming, you know, talked to the chickens and- made a bed so the villager had a place to sleep but guess what the villager disappeared it was literally just gone vanished but seconds later i found it outside i had no idea how this thing escaped like it was all closed off up there the villager didn't have a job so i placed the brewing stand in the house and got a little peek around the corner here and noticed the pillagers were forming an army and having a villager out in the open would be a very bad idea so this villager had to be on house arrest next i went to the nether. For some reason, I was convinced I was just gonna mine around here and come across some netherite. I do not know what I was thinking. I just, I needed netherrack anyway for the base, so I wasn't just wasting my time down here, or at least that's what I told myself. Day 57, I went back to the overworld with no netherite, but despite that, I put the netherrack in the furnace and built out more of the underground section, so it just wasn't a big, boring, bland area. Bro, what, what are you doing out here in the rain? What is this? Later tonight, I found some sugarcane on my base, so y'all know I'm making a sugarcane farm out here. I tamed a horse and challenged a pillager to a duel before ending the night by creating an area for a melon farm. I don't even like watermelons. What, what am I doing this for? The next day, I finished the melon farm and thought I could use bone meal to just get infinite melons out here, but I was very wrong. I placed steps and the nether bricks. The nether bricks were a terrible idea. Who thought of that? I don't, I don't know. It just took about 10 years to make two of them, and today I accidentally took out this pillager, which meant the biggest war this world has ever seen is about to go down, and that meant I had half a day to prepare. And you know how I prepared? I just mined dirt. Literally, I did not know. I do not know what I was thinking out here. I thought me and my axe were invincible until the evasion began and the villager was terrified. The next day was war. I made a new shield and went at it. <laughs> How am I almost dead already? Why? Pillager after pillager. I took them down, and the problem was too many of them were spawning in. They were trying to get into the house, so I crafted armor and finished off the last ones in the base, and then spent the remainder of the nights on the outside, but there was another problem. There was a pillager hidden somewhere around here that made them all keep spawning, and the raid just kept going on. I had no idea where it was. It was day 60. In the war, it was not over yet. I spent the entire day around this border just searching around for any place this pillager could be and found absolutely nothing. Day 61, the search for the final pillager began and today I found a cave. Yo, the entire time the pillagers were just hiding right here in the cave. After almost getting blown up, I took out the pillagers and the raid was over. We may have not won the battle, but I, yeah, I think I think we won. You know, we lost the battle and the war, bro. Unfortunately for me, this was only the very start of something much greater down the road. It's better to be a war warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. After all that, I did some farming and fed the mobs today. Those things haven't been fed in like five days, bro. Luckily, I found some coal, which I used to light up the base throughout the night. And as you can tell, something had to be done about this thing that apparently is supposed to be a river somehow. I don't know. So I thought, you know, why not just blow it up? I placed some TNT along here and set it off.
I spent the entirety of day 62 working on a water barrier around this edge, just defying every law of physics out there. And today I created this part of the castle. It's just a pole right now, but th this is gonna be a fortress one day, I'm telling you. I added some more onto the works of the castle and extended the floor plan over here. Where should I place the sugar cane? Right back where I found it in the first place. I spent the rest of tonight fixing up around here until day 63. And today I just started building the castle, of course, and then realized I had a ton of banners from the war. So you know what I did with those? Placed them around the base to show the dominance over the pillagers. You know what's better than a regular bow? A bow with power four. I was feared and known across this small border by every mob. You know, I even feared my Sell. Pillager, you, you do not want this. The pillagers wanted war, so I gave it to them. And when I returned to the base, I kinda accidentally started another war out here. Bro, what is the villager doing? Why why are you running, man? Well, I had no idea where the villager went, but I had other matters to tend with. Pillager after pillager I fought until it was down to the final one again. Which, of course, was nowhere to be found. Day 64, I wanted to build houses for the future villagers around here, and to do that, I needed a lot of wood. So your boy visited the Sky Island and went crazy getting all the leaves and trees I could. I spent the entire night building the front and the walls to the houses. The goal was to make each house its own theme and not just some boring copy of the other. But since this was in a border, my resources were very limited. Bruh, please don't blow this up. Please don't blow it. Bruh, it blew it up. The houses were starting to look like houses and not blank boxes anymore. And on the next day of day 65, the two houses were almost done. You know how to make anything better? This is what you do. You just add the leaves everywhere. The sugarcane farm is now expanding and today I made another villager house. The next day, four of the houses were done, so I went onto the roof and added leaves. Yo, this is actually, it's actually not looking trash. Wow. Now we have our own empire out here. Look at this. But you know what? We're going to need some more houses out here. Days 65 to 66, I spent these next several days building some more of these houses. And by day 67, the village was done. Next, I just needed villagers and a castle to keep the pillagers out. So I created an outline first of where that castle would be. And halfway through the outline, I noticed part of the village was actually sticking out. So I checked up on that and you boy villager was there. I made a totally safe, you know, totally safe water slide that it just fell right off. I broke my own ankles and found the villager trying to escape. Yo, why is this man running from me? What are you? No. Get on the boat. Okay, you know what? I'd be running too if someone was chasing me down like this with a boat in their hand. The villager was in its new fancy prison with a bed and a torch. Surge protector, what the heck? What in the world? I do not know what that was, but okay, cool. Day 68, I added a bed to the house and spent today making the castle around the water here. Bruh, I have farmed so much off camera, y'all do not even know. Okay, what in the bruh? Why are the pigs piglins now? What has happened? I made this villager a farmer and made its day by getting ripped off. Like all this for one emerald, why? To finish off tonight, I visited the pillagers, chopped up sugarcane, built the castle, and said hi to a skeleton. The next day, I did more castle fixing and captured some villagers to expand the empire of Amazetopia here. A, the empire is slowly expanding, W's. Day 70, I needed one more bed for the village cause the one sheep, you know, kinda disappeared. I do not know what happened to that thing. So luckily there was a bed in the old village that I could use. Today I explored some of the new things the border uncovered, one of which being a massive ravine, which I entered in with no preparation and then threw hands with an enderman. This place had enough coal to help me not die out here, so I mined around and placed enough torches that night to give the sun global warming. Wait, it's not a globe. You can't even- okay. Bro, why do the cows hate me, literally? Fun fact, I really need leather if I'm gonna make bookshelves. Hey, the wheat was a success. Cow, you know, I am so sorry for you, cow. <laughs> It's gonna be a tough 30 days for you. Tonight, I had a realization. I spent the last 70 days forgetting you could just make wool and beds from string. So yeah, that terrible. I made enough beds to make the nether non-existent. And on the next day, I placed them in the villager houses. Today, I visited the nether to dig tunnels. Yeah, that's all, I just dug tunnels literally. Towards night, I placed more of the nether rack on the floor, and the next day, I fixed up the nether area some more by placing the stairs. I got rid of some dirts, and added more nether rack. 
and then spent the night mining because it was time to find diamonds. I spent the next three days down here exploring the depths of the earth, finding way too much iron than anybody needed. I found diamonds and enough mobs to make the earth spin backwards. Day 75, I wanted to leave the earth's core down here, but ran into more caves everywhere until I eventually made it to the surface as a rich man, where I was greeted by a zombie to congratulate me. I had 51 diamonds and way too much iron, so the first thing I did was repair my pickaxe. Bro, that thing's been through a lot out here. And I made an ax and enchanted it with sharpness three. I got to smelting the thousand pounds of iron I'd found, then crafted diamond armor, so I wasn't wearing tin foil around here. Day 76, I woke up the villagers by just tossing them carrots. Then of course, it had to start raining on me. The chicken hadn't eaten in years, so I did the farming and fed them. Don't mind if I do. Smelted some gold and hit the trees because it was time to create an enchantment room. I dug out an outline for it and just filled it in. And on the next day, I finally crafted that enchantment table and a single bookshelf before building the enchantment room out so it didn't look like a box of nothing. What should I name this thing? Yo, I'm naming you Bob. <laughs> <laughs> just Bob, bro. I spent the night building the roof, and day 78, I spent the entirety adding designs on the interior and the exterior. Okay, this thing looking all kinds of crazy, I'm not gonna lie, but fire. It's totally fire. As the sun was setting, I got some more sugar cane and hunted down a pillager before building a farm for the random beetroot seeds I found in a mine shaft. And on the next day, I continued making the beetroot farm. Honestly, I do not, I don't like beets, but I had to make it, so there was one for each plant. Yo, we've got a mini villager. Look at this dude. The empire is slowly forming. I mined out a section of dirt because I thought it'd be nice to have a sugarcane farm up here so I didn't have to run a marathon to get the other sugarcane. Really, phantoms? Why you gotta ruin my day like that? What the heck? Day 80, I added a couple more bookshelves and enchanted the tools with efficiency and fortune. I spent the rest of the day building the castle because I really needed to get a move on with it or else I would just be stuck behind a border within a smaller border and I, I did not want that. Day 81, I made the grass like this because I thought it looked cool but I just ended up deleting it. I did some repairing and crafting because I was headed back to the nether. Yo, y'all yo, yo ready for this? I traded with a piglin that gave me fire resistance potions which was cool but honestly i was never gonna use them then did some exploration around the edges of the border thinking maybe a fortress would just pop up out of nowhere and be uncovered but found a whole lot of nothing i ran into these skeletons that wanted me off their land and i decided to listen to them and went back to the overworld i fixed up the nether section because i was really behind with it and i needed a move on why are you in my way chicken what the heck and i think i broke the villagers bro what am i looking at right now should i be scared the heck after witnessing whatever that was i made some glowstone and placed it around here throughout that night day 82 i hit up the sugarcane and beetroot before venturing out beyond the castle because i needed wood from the trees i was going to feed the cows and kind of unleash the masses out here i wasn't gonna have cows running around my base so i did what i had to do and today it was time to enchant the armor i enchanted the chest plate because it was the only thing i could to be honest and got protection in unbreaking on that thing you know what was taking up all my time these dang bricks i was getting scammed out here literally and tonight i tried making a roof over the mob grinder thinking they'd start spawning and fought off the attack of phantoms here dude the roof is filled in and no mobs are spawning Th this is my luck day 83 i do not like spiders today i made some bookshelves so the enchantment room wasn't trash and the villager army was growing i wanted to make arrows but i needed flint which luckily i had way too much gravel than anyone needed so I placed that and broke it till I was stacked with flints and now made enough arrows to take on the whole war by myself basically. As the sun was setting, I was thinking about tomorrow because it meant war with the pillagers. Alright golem, tomorrow this is war. It's gonna be tough. You know what, I don't, I don't even know if this golem's gonna do anything. Day 84, the villagers were going crazy, just jumping around and I charged in to attack. Alright, we pillaging the pillagers. I found a horn up here and it was time to take over. You know what, I'll you know what, I'll take some wool, okay free wool. The raid began and I got positioned on top of the castle with my bow. I exterminated pillager after pillager until there was one left and of course I couldn't find it. I'd searched everywhere. On day 85 I searched the underground cave for it and didn't even find it in there. The raid was growing while I looked for this thing and I spent the entirety of the day down here lighting this place up getting 
coal while trying to just find it. And when I returned to the surface, I messed up. Uh, this is very bad. <laughs> what have I done? There was an actual army now this time, and it was headed right at me. And you know what I did? I threw eggs at them. Okay, why did I do that? Why? I am dead. I ran back into the base for cover and found Gary the Golem here doing absolutely nothing, just sitting down in the same spot as always. I had an idea to pick up the lava and just place it over the horde of pillagers. Genius, you know, thinking it would work. But before I did that, I tried pushing the golem over to him and no, he was like, nope, this man ran off. The lava idea completely backfired and now I was getting shot at by a thousand flaming arrows. On day 86, I placed some more lava, which didn't work, so I had to do it the old fashioned way. I made a small tunnel up to him and took him out one by one from below, which was actually working. Here I really realized the gravity of the situation I was in. With having a base next to some pillagers, the battle of the camp pillager had ended, and I took out the remainder of them. But yeah, I accidentally got cursed again somehow, which meant, you know, I was right back at it. I then realized something. If I had the village bell, it would let me see where the pillagers are during the raid. So I visited the abandoned village and found it on day 87. With this thing, I could see where all the pillagers were hiding, and bruh, there's like multiple of them underground. Why? I tried fighting the pillagers underwater, where I was literally dodging bullets. Honestly, when there were this much, they kind of just took each other out. I even cannonballed into him and somehow came out of it alive. I almost died, so I retreated to the base and fixed up my axe and armor. Bruh, how am I still alive right now? I don't- I don't understand this. Before going back in throughout the night to attack, I went back and forth like this, attacking and repairing. The next day was day 88, and there were only a few left. I had to take on the final one. This thing was in the center of the Earth's core, I'm telling you, underground somewhere. I spent the day trying to find this thing, right? And while I looked for the pillager, the army expanded. So I went back to the base and somehow the pillagers got in. No, bruh, they are taking out the villagers. Oh my gosh, what the heck? I left the tunnel open. That is so dumb. Now it wasn't safe anywhere and the castle was infiltrated. I was on half a heart. The only option left was to retreat to the house where I made an anvil and fixed up the armor I had left. Day 89, I tried not to die and cooked up chicken to heal. Luckily, the war was over, but I had to find the pillager that caused all this. Bro, there are so many places this pillager could hide. Oh my gosh. There was only one way left to end this. Luckily, their base was made of wood, so I got out the old flint and steel and did what I had to do. Guys, I think it's over. It was finally over, and the pillagers weren't on the list anymore. Not gonna lie, I, I got destroyed there, bro. That was terrible. <laughs> Clearly, I had some fixing up to do around this base, and I got a lot more to build with 10 days later left. To start day 90, I said hi to this dude here and expanded the underwater section of the castle. My chest area was very unorganized, so I had to do something about that and create a chest room. I gathered up the materials around here, fed the villagers because they just got wiped out, and spent the rest of the day building the chest room. The battle took up all of my diamonds, so I went down to do the mining that night. Why is a witch in the villager house? What are you doing? I fixed up this axe here and smelted some gold. I figured the chest room could use glass around it, so I got some sand and let it cook. In the meantime, I made the castle walls bigger and spent the rest of the night here building the chest room and added protection 3 onto the armor. Day 92, I figured why not make a pathway going from the house to the mining room because I really didn't have a great entrance for it yet. I mined down here making it look better and today was definitely the day of entrances. The castle also didn't have an entrance yet so I kind of just hopped the border every time to get in. So I made some steps and placed some steps all the way down into this ravine here for the rest of the night. Day 93, the ravine parts of the entrance was finished and looking like this. Now I needed to make a gate type thing and had no idea for it, so right now I enchanted my helmet. Said hi to the villagers. Yo, how did this little dude get out? This guy's a parkour master out here. I repaired the pickaxe and got more cobblestone that night so I could spend tomorrow making the castle larger. The next day, that's what I did, building these walls to the moon itself, until eventually I couldn't build anything because I just ran out of everything. And here I made a mistake. I fixed my boots using my last diamond instead of fixing my axe. And now I couldn't mine much or it would just break on me. To improvise, I just mined with an iron pick. These creepers really are out here just trying to ruin my day. Why? I had the walls, but I needed a section to walk around the top for like archery and whatnot. So I mined the whole forest basically. Day 95, I wasn't kidding about mining the whole forest. It's morning and
and that's what I've been doing still. First, I made ladders, so I wasn't building to get up, and placed two rows of slabs as far as I could around this castle throughout the entirety of today. Guys, it is nighttime, and now you can actually walk around on top of the castle. It's a miracle. I spent the rest of the night mining around this crazy force of nature called the water wall here, so I didn't have to close my eyes every time I walked past it. Day 96, I basically built the castle throughout the day and added magma blocks and netherrack around the nether river section. Day 97, I realized the inside here looked good, but the outside was still definitely lacking. Hey, we got a visitor. Look at this. He just casually walks through the entrance of the castle. I added cobblestone and wood to the front of the entrance to give it some depth and added slabs to the top part, then torches so I didn't surround myself with an army of mobs. Yo, really skeleton? Really, bro, you're doing this to me. Oh gosh, not the phantoms again. Why? I'll take on a pillager army, but the phantoms are just another set of annoying. Day 98, I added more to the front and got a good look at things, thinking what to add. I could have just went in and added a ton of leaves everywhere, but first I decided to put down these deep slate stairs because why not? I literally have enough torches to replace the sun in this border here, and somehow there's a creeper out during the day still. Now tonight, of course, I added the leaves, and I added them on top of the castle and basically everywhere throughout it I could. And now, on day 99, I was getting rained on. I continued to add these leaves everywhere, but it still felt like in the front of this castle there was something missing. And when I went to place the gates, of course, the creeper said nope and just blew up my base. But what is what is this thing doing? Are you here to help me? Nope. Today I added touches to everything around the base and actually was able to place the gates this time without getting blown up. And lastly, walked around the outside of the base to explore all the new things the expanding border uncovered. And finally, it was day 100. We survived 100 days in an expanding border out here somehow and literally went through like five wars while building a castle. So I'd say this was a massive success. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, drop a like and subscribe and comment where you want me to survive 100 days next. Peace out and God bless.